All right. So you are back for round three of our series on coping skills. So in our first video, I gave you an overview of what coping skills are and when we would use them. And then in the second video, we started off with our first category of five coping skills. So here we are, and we are going to move into our second category, which is distract. So if you remember uh, last time, you or we talked about the relax category and all different activities that we could do to help us relax. So today we're going to shift our focus to distract. And so distract is useful when we just need to get our mind off of something. Um, maybe it's something that we're worrying about or we're anxious about. So maybe there is a big test looming or um, there's a race coming up that you're participating in, or you have a deadline at work, and you just need to distract yourself for a little bit um, to kind of ease that anxiety or that worry. So this is really a great category to pull our kind of interests or hobbies in, because we often have hobbies that when we do them, we find ourselves distracted, right? And so, for instance, during the pandemic, um, when I just needed something to do to distract myself from um, the chaos that was going on all around me, um, I took up cross-stitching, which I learned to do as a kid and I haven't done in, I don't know, 10 or 15 years. And I decided, oh, I'm gonna do this again. And I found it a really good way uh, to distract myself from kind of all the noise, right? And all of the worry and uncertainty that was going on in the world around me. And so I would just sit during the day, at night, whenever, and I would cross stitch. And so some people knit or crochet, um, some people make music or create art or do another crafting activity, or they like to cook do puzzles, play games. This is the perfect category for all of those things. Those are all strategies that would fall under the distract um, category. So maybe it's one of those things, maybe it's going out with your friends or calling somebody and just, you know, talking with a friend that you like to catch up with. Maybe you like to journal or draw. I mentioned making art. For kids, this might be building with blocks. If they're really into Legos or building blocks, um, that can be a really great distraction for kids. Or maybe it's playing with their favorite toy. Have you ever watched kids um, play with their favorite toy, whether it's a dollhouse and dolls or action figures, and they can keep themselves occupied for such a long period of time, right? because that's just something that really speaks to them. So this is the time for those activities. Um, reading is a great one for our people who like to read, uh, listening to music. So there's overlap in these too. Uh, if you remember last time we talked about listening to music as being relaxing and some people find listening to music very distracting in a good way. They find it a distraction from what's going on around them. So that's a whole lot of strategies. Again, you probably can come up with a few on your own that I didn't even mention, um, but these are all great things to help distract us from things that we really can't control, right? If I have a race coming up that I'm in, it's not going to do me any good two weeks ahead of time to be worrying about that race. So if I find myself having one of those days where I'm really anxious about it, then that tells me I need one of these distract activities. Um, this is great for kids that maybe are worried about a test coming up or some sort of um, deadline that they have at school or a game that they're involved in and they just need to distract themselves. So that's it for today. I hope that you join me back next time and we are going to move into that third coping skill category. So until next time, 
I hope that you have a great day, great few days, and I will see you right back here.